in this particular problem on the Bogilal series, we are asked to print the first n odd numbers. This program is a slightly different when you are asked print odd numbers up to n. Suppose you are said print odd numbers up to n and n is 5, then you will print 1, 3, and 5. But suppose I say print the first n odd numbers and I give n as 5, then I'll print 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 because Till 9, I am reaching my first 5 odd numbers. In this particular session, I am going to show you two particular ways in which this problem can be solved. So, first, what I am doing is I am defining the initial odd number as 1. This count C is used to keep track of how many odd numbers I am printing till now. Since I have not printed any odd numbers, initially it is kept at 1. The first thing is I am asking the user is input n in the sense how many odd numbers he or she would like to see printed. So here if you see the corresponding statement is enter the number of odd terms that means whether you want 5 odd numbers to be printed, 10 odd numbers to be printed and so on. So that is being entered into n. Now this equivalent is this declaration here. Now what I am doing in this loop here is as long as the count of the number of odd numbers I am printing is less than or equal to n. If that condition is true, I am printing the odd number, I am increasing the odd number by 2 as well as I am increasing the count by 1. Let us see how we have done that in this particular program. So the same here, c less than or equal to n, I have used the while loop because there is this particular connection. Then print f odd i am printing the odd number then what i am doing i am increasing the odd number by 2 same here i am increasing the odd number by 2 then what i am doing increasing the count of how many odd numbers i have printed by 1 since i have printed one odd number i'll increase it by 1 it becomes 2 now this particular process is going to keep on repeating till i have printed the required number of odd numbers let's take a simple example let us say n is just 3. So what will happen is c is 1. Okay. So c is 1. 1 is less than or equal to number of odd numbers which is 3. So I am going to print 1. Odd is going to be 3. Count is going to be 2. 2 is still less than or equal to 3. So I am going to print the next odd number which is 3. Odd number now becomes 5. Count from 2 ends up becoming 3. 3 is still less than or equal to 3. Then I am going to print 5. Odd number is 7. Count is 4. 4 is not less than or equal to 3. So I will come out and stop. So this was one way of trying to show you how you can print the first n odd numbers. Now what we shall do is we shall take an alternative approach to do the same thing. So let us see in this alternative approach how are we handling things. Alright. First let's take a look at the flowchart to get clarity and then subsequently we'll end up going with the program all right all right so first let me put this in place and then i shall help you understand the logic so here what i am doing is most of the program is pretty much similar to what i explained a minute ago the difference here is I am calculating the last odd number using this particular formula limit is equal to 2 times n minus 1. So odd is equal to 1, limit is 2 times n minus 1. So that's why n is not given any value, limit is not given any value, odd is equal to 1. The next step is I am going to ask input the value of odd terms. So input n, enter the number of odd terms. Then if you see here, I will have already done this calculation limit is equal to 2n minus 1. So you can see here limit is 2 into n minus 1. Odd is already 1 here. Then I come into the body of the loop. I am asking the question is the number of value of the odd number less than or equal to limit. It can either be true or it can be false. If it is true I am printing the odd number. I am increasing odd number by 2. If it is false I am stopping. Let's see what I have done here. 
odd less than or equal to limit odd less than or equal to limit now printing the odd number i am printing the odd number then what i am doing increasing the odd number by 2 i am increasing the odd number by 2 this particular process is going to keep on continuing till i have reached the limit let's take an example let's say n is 5 2 into 5 is 10 10 minus 1 is 9 that means the last odd number should be printed here should be 9 so what i am doing is odd is 1 okay 1 is less than or equal to 9 it will print 1 odd becomes 3 3 is less than or equal to 9 it will print 3 then it becomes 5 5 is less than or equal to 9 print 5 7 odd becomes 7 7 is less than or equal to 9 print 7 then odd becomes 9 9 is still less than or equal to 9 so it will print 9 odd now becomes 11 11 is definitely not less than or equal to 9 so i will come out and stop so please take a look at these particular pieces of code compare the flowcharts with the equivalent program and your concept of logic is going to be really clear let us see what this flowchart is trying to do it is trying to say find the sum of the first n natural numbers suppose n is 5 i should do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 so first thing i need the end point so i have a variable called as n and i'm asking the user to enter the value of n most important thing i need to initialize sum to 0 because every time i'm going to add 1 to sum 2 to sum 3 to sum and then the nat first natural number c i'm starting with 1 now after i input n what i'm trying to do here in my program i'm saying enter the number of terms or the last natural number you wish to uh, find the sum of so i am reading that into n then when i come here how long should i keep finding or adding the natural number to sum as long as the value of c is less than or equal to n so same here i am doing a while loop while c is less than or equal to n now there are two possibilities while c is less than or equal to n it can be yes or it can be no if it is yes then what I am doing here, I am saying sum is sum plus c. Same here, sum is sum plus c. Increasing the value of count by 1, I am increasing the value of count by 1. Now, this particular process is going to repeat till c exceeds n by 1. Suppose n is just 5, c will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And when c becomes 6, it will be no. And then it will print the sum. Sum of 1 to 5 is going to be. 15. So here you can see that same logic here. It's transformed here. Print sum of the series is sum. I am just printing the sum here. So the moral of the story here is just see the connection between the flowchart and the logic. There is a one to one matching between every step. So if you're clear with the concepts of your flowchart, you'll be very clear with your ability to write good programs. In this particular transformation of a flowchart, a program i will show you how to calculate the factorial of a number using the logic which has been developed for finding the flowchart so the first variable is n n tells me the input natural number whose factorial is to be found out that's why i have declared an integer variable n in the next step what i have done is i have given an initial value of the final factorial as 1 and i have used a counter as 1 the reason for the counter is suppose n is 3 so first it will be fact into c then c will become 2 so then c will become 3 so this way c will keep on increasing and that increased number is going to be multiplied with fact so as long as the value of c is less than or equal to n i am going to multiply c with fact and finally when c is 1 greater than n i am going to print the fact so first thing i am going to ask the user enter the number or whose factorial is to be calculated so this part here has come here this step here has gone here now how long should i calculate the factorial as long as the value of c is less than or equal to n so the same condition should be here while c less than or equal to n okay as long as this condition is true i am going to say fact is equal to fact into c then what am i going to do next i need to increase the c by 1 so first time I'll multiply fact by 1, then next time fact by 2, fact by 3. So I increase c by 1, 
C++, here also you will see C is increased by 1. At some point, C is going to become 1 greater than N. This while loop condition fails and I am going to come out and print the factorial of the number is percentage %d fact. So here you can see, suppose the input number n was 3, at some point c is going to be equal to 4. 4 is not less than or equal to 3, so it's going to print fact. Fact has already been calculated in the loop. 1 into 1, then 1 into 2, then 2 into 3, which is 6. Then 6 into is not possible because c will have already become 4. So now it showed you how you can convert flowchart logic into exact number of steps in a C program. So please make it a point to do a one-on-one -on -one correspondence between a flowchart and a program. In this particular flowchart, we are asked to find the sum of the following series up to n terms. So here if you see, the sum is 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5 minus 6 plus 7 minus 8 plus 9. So the sign is alternating between plus and minus. That's why we have used a variable called as sign with the initial value 1. So same here, sign is used to the initial value 1. Sum is 0 because sum is going to store the sum of this particular series. Then this C is used to keep track of this particular number 1, 3, 4, 5 and all the way till n. The first thing I'm going to ask the user is enter the nth term. So I'm going to read the nth term. This condition was written here in the flowchart, input n. Then next what I am going to do here is, as long as the value of c is less than or equal to n, I am going to do a loop. So this is again going to have a true or a false condition. So if it is true, then what I am going to do here is, I am going to say sum is sum plus sine into c. Initially sign is 1, sum is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. Then next time if you see sign is minus, so I am going to multiply sign or make sign minus sign. So sign is plus, it becomes minus. C becomes 2 because the next number happens to be 2. Then you see the step here, sign is sign of minus, C is C plus plus. This particular loop will keep on happening as long as this value of c is less than or equal to n. At some point, c is going to exceed n by 1. At that point, I am going to print the sum. So if you see here, I am also printing the sum here. So here what is being done here is, this particular series, the important thing to understand is this sign fellow. Sign is going between positive to negative. That's why I am making sign equal to minus sign. So minus into minus is plus, plus into minus is minus. So automatically sine becomes plus and minus alternatively. So I'm, when I multiply sine with plus c, once it will add to sum, once it will subtract from sum. So this is the series or the flow of how you find the sum of the series from all the way starting from s till n. I hope you have understanding of all the problems of lecture 5 are now clear with this particular problem being solved.